one that could make me as much as what a person would make all year doing this. Or I'll do two. That's really my focus is that um, making larger money with less energy. I want the return on time. So this is the historic house. So the historic house, as you guys know, uh, was a property that I bought right when COVID hit. Um, this is a property that is a, a 3,200 square foot house in a downtown Safety Harbor. Super great area. Um, right by the water and it needed a lot of work. So I bought this house right right when right before or under contract right before COVID hit and I bought it for um, $289,000 purchase. So when COVID hit what I did is I kept on holding off. So they had an issue with open permits. So because I didn't know what was gonna happen with COVID, I said I wouldn't close on the property until they closed out the permits. That ended up buying me about three months, which got me to the middle of, um, which got me to about uh, June, July. So we feel more comfortable like, okay, COVID is here, but it's not horrible. In Florida, things were still going well. So I said, okay, I'm closing on the deal. I ended up buying it for $289,000. Initially, I was planning to put about $100,000 into the remodel. And um, so estimate. Sloppy writing, right? But again, not an English teacher I'm doing math here. $100,000 on the reno. So it was going to be in about $389,000 is my cost. My sale price i was planning to sell it for um at that time i was thinking if i could get 600 grand for this property that'd be awesome at 600 grand your closing costs are roughly when you're selling it's roughly about seven percent six percent realtor fees one percent for miscellaneous so we're looking at forty-two thousand in closing costs now Carrying cost for this project was supposed to last roughly six, maybe nine months. So six to nine months on about, the loan was about 300 grand. I put down $80,000 cash. So 80,000 was cash. And in this scenario, the carrying cost for about six to nine months at 8% for 300 grand is um, sixteen thousand dollars. So sixteen thousand dollars was uh, the estimated interest. So uh, we're gonna just put it interest. So sale amount. So three eighty nine plus sixteen plus forty two. That's eight nine seven seven one eight fourteen one four. So it was about 400, I'm gonna erase this right here because it's gonna be confusing for people. So total cost. $447,000 was my total cost for this, for this property. This is the estimate. And the sale was 600 grand was my estimate. So I should have made about a hundred, a hundred and fifty thousand, roughly, and it was about eighty thousand dollars cash. Too many zeros. Ooh, good call, Hannah. So I was gonna basically roughly double my. I was gonna double, triple my money. And because I was going to get my 80,000 back, 
plus 150 in profit. Along the way, uh, my plan was, since this was a 3,200 square foot house, I was gonna get the attic zoned for living space. So I got an engineer, I went through the process, the steps, it took many months, uh, roughly three to four months to get it through the city, and I converted the 600 square foot to living space. So it was already remodeled, didn't really do too much to the third floor, didn't find much value in that. I did put a new carpet and that was about it. But in the process of me doing that, uh, getting 600 additional square feet, which was only putting in new carpet and maybe a little bit of lighting, that was a significant add of value, right? When, when, home, when prices per square foot, when prices per square foot are around 200 plus, and you can magically create 600 of additional living square footage, that's $120,000 of value, right? That's a lot of my profit margin, the 150 profit came from that alone. Um, I did need to do a lot of other things in addition to that. Now, the reasoning why, how can you do that so easily? Or what was my situation with that? One, I was gambling on that I can get it through. I had a very good feeling I can get it through the city. You can't always get an attic approved for living space. Do people live in attics? Yes. Can you make it livable? Yes. But does it meet the requirements of the county code to be able to count it as heated living space and be able to advertise it? Not always. For example, up north in New Jersey, a lot of people make their basements into living space, but they do not register that with the county. So you cannot list it as heated square footage when you sell it because you did not go through the proper process of converting it to living space. So when you list your home for sale, you might have an extra thousand square foot in basement. You cannot list that thousand square foot unless you go through the process. If you go through the process, you have to pay the taxes and fees and so on. So some people don't do that. I'm willing to take, take that hit. I'm willing to pay those taxes and fees to do it because it's going to add so much value to my property when I sell it. So if you do it right, you do it legal, you're going to make so much money on the back end. So you have to stay focused long term. Don't get uh, short sighted. Now, this was the estimate pre COVID. Um, and you guys know COVID flipped everything upside down, flipped everything upside down. So this was the estimate. So reality, I realty, the I after the L. L. I after yeah. the L. There we go. Again, not an English teacher here, people. People are like trying to give me a hard time over my spelling. Again, I'm not an English teacher. Whatever, English is my second language, okay? Now math, that, that I'll help you with, right? So the reality is again, purchase, was 289 that didn't change but what ended up happening was a nine month max remodel ended up taking me from july to i sold it one in october yep. november october. so it took uh 15 months so now 15 months of interest i'm going to keep everything simple interest 15 months of interest ended up being about with my points and everything, I'm going to say almost $36,000 in interest for that period of time. Uh, What's your points? Point. Oh, okay. So if you guys don't know what a point is, when you get a hard money loan or even a standard loan. You can pay points up front and sometimes you have to pay points up front. So when you're getting a hard money loan, you're gonna be required to pay two to three points, maybe four points, depending on how risky your deal is. So if your loan's $100,000, they might require you to pay two points up front. Two points on $100,000 is $2,000. So if I have to pay two points on a $300,000 loan, that means I have to pay $6,000 up front. Now, if you guys are new to the game, you're going to be short-sighted. You're like, I'll never pay someone $6,000. It's a waste of money. I'll never pay a realtor commissions to sell. Uh, I'm, I'm going to keep 3%. Guys, if you're looking at 2 to 3%, you're looking at the wrong business. If you do it right, 
you're gonna have fat margins. Now, if you're a realtor and you're really good and you can list it, great, that's awesome. But the reality is, if you can add a realtor that's awesome at what they do, then you can make way more money by teaming up. And that's what took me from small player to big player. That's what took me from $5 million in real estate, which right now we're pushing $25 million in real estate. And by the end of next year, we're probably gonna be at 125 million inside of our portfolio, if not more than that. Like we're growing exponentially. Um, our returns are awesome because we team up with the right people. You wanna do everything yourself? That's okay, you can be that guy. But if you wanna be large and you wanna have time, you have to partner with the right people. Back to it. 36,000 is the cost of doing business. It is what it is. I'd rather pay someone to borrow that money and me use that money somewhere else. So that's that. So now we got the closing costs, right? Well, the closing costs on this deal, it ended up changing. This property went from a $600,000 sale price because of the rarity of finding homes. People were not working. They were not building. Everything got shut down with COVID. When we were still working, we were still doing stuff. We were able to put yourself in a better position. So our sale went from $600,000. We ended up selling it for $860,000. And to be honest with you, if I waited a little bit longer, maybe one month more, I just wanted to get done with this because I got a lot of other things on my plate. But if I waited one month more, initially we rent, we listed it for like 999,000. We probably would have sold it for like, probably at least 925. What happened is when I listed it in July, again, things went wrong and they're on the news everywhere. Florida is going to have a hurricane and it's going to devastate Florida. And I'm like, come on, man. We have a hurricane like every week. Nothing is going to happen, man. This thing is like, you know, like we don't get out of bed under a cat three, right? If it's if a cat one or two, like, okay, that's a, it's a party weekend. It's not a, it's not a scary thing, right? We're not leaving town. We're just buying beers and we're going to grill out. So anyway, 860,000 what we sold it for, right? Now again, 7% is roughly the number. We're talking about 56, 56, 42. So it was like $60,200 was roughly the closing cost. That's what I paid in commissions. So if you see this, I paid $100,000 in interest in commissions on this deal. Again, some people are gonna be like, no, that's blah, 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 blah. I wanna try to save it. Again, you could, but I'd rather do volume and I'll make way more money. Uh, now, the remodel, the reno, is up there. The reno end up costing me more. So the reno ended up costing me about 200 grand. We gutted that house down to the studs. And if you saw the pictures, if you guys are following me daily on my story on IG, uh, and then like on YouTube, I have videos with details of these projects before and after and explaining what I'm going to do. We gutted it to the studs. The house was already remodeled and they did a horrible job. They probably, that house is a hundred years old and has gone, it's gone through maybe 10 remodels. The very last one was a couple years ago, really bad. Even though they put new electric and new plumbing, it was so bad. I had to really literally gut all the drywall, redo all the electrical, all the plumbing, AC, um, put in cat six wire and coax throughout behind the walls, put up cameras, insulated everything. So it's very energy efficient, new beams in the house. So structurally sound. And then from there, put in the insulation, put the drywall back and made it beautiful. If you guys saw the kitchen, the kitchen is gorgeous. The house was like all boxy. So on the first floor is like 1600 square feet, but it was like boxy, different sections. It's like literally all boxy. We opened the whole thing up, just left the bathroom closed. So now we had 1600 square feet for the living room, uh, dining room, kitchen. Oh, and we did have a little close off right here for an office, so it's private and quiet. Insulated all the walls in the office, insulated the ceiling, so it's really gonna be quiet. Everyone can work. Cat6 plug plugins, so you can actually take your laptop, plug it directly into the internet. So if you're worried your Wi-Fi is not good, this is gonna make sure that you have a strong connection. So when you're trading, you know, Shiba, 
you can make sure to get your trade to go through. So now, uh, the, so we did it, we brought it up. We made it gorgeous, right? I mean, the bathroom and the master bedroom, the shower had 10 water outlets, right? It was like a car wash. And it was the bathroom shower, the shower section of that bathroom was as big as a standard bathroom. The whole thing, sink, toilet, and tub, that whole, imagine that whole thing is just a shower. So it was gorgeous. It was really an awesome house. Um, so HDTV, HDT, not HDTV, um, Lifetime and Hallmark both wanted to film in that house. And then at the end, one of my sons was like, you know what? No, I'm too busy, whatever. So, the runner, why did it go up to 200000 So one, the price of wood went from $3 and say 80 cents for a two by four to 11. Now, luckily we bought most of our wood before that happened. Then the cost of everything, cause things got worse and worse behind the wall. So, and then also I saw the quality of the neighborhood was getting significantly better and the type of people that are gonna live here have money. So I thought an extra five grand here, five grand here, five grand there is gonna make the homeowner uh, extremely happy. You gotta understand that people that have money, they, ha they can spend it if you give them quality. So by me having Cat 6 and Coax in every single room and behind the TVs built in, that's an extremely high value for them. You have to provide value for your consumer. Whatever your client wants, give it to them and they'll pay for it. Don't give them something that they want. They don't want. I spent $15,000. Okay, here. I spent $15,000 into this bu budget because the front of the house was bland. And this is supposed to be like a historic coastal Southern home. It needs a grand front porch. So if you guys saw, I, I did a 40 by I think 15 or 40 by 10 uh, front porch with a metal roof. That cost $15,000, but it made the house so grand. It was, you, it was like, wow, this is, this is, looks amazing. Um, so when you do that, you put in that quality, you do those things, it, it costs money, right? Um, so made it significantly better, added the wow factor and added better, higher quality items. Um, the AC, oh, I wasn't planning to change one of the ACs. It was just so bad that I had to change the AC. The walls were so off and skewed that it cost significantly more to address that and then to put up the drywall to make it straight. So all those things cost money and added and added and added. So anyway, 200 grand. So you can see here, we made over $200,000. So this is upside down. Give or take the reno, the reno could have been 250. Exactly, I don't remember, it's been over a year and a half. But we did between, let's just say, two, uh, 35, to 285,000 in profit on this deal. So, it was worth the time, 15 months, and actually took us 18 months in total because three months were under contract waiting to close with COVID to make this 235 to 285. Again, the rental could have been 250. Uh, you know, I don't have the numbers in front of me. Now, also, this is how I think. My logic is if you're working at a job or you're having a business, and I have like five businesses. I have an accounting firm, I have an insurance agency, I have a mortgage company, we do loans, we do taxes, bookkeeping and payroll for real estate investors and high net worth individuals. We're really busy. We own the, a large real estate portfolio. We do property management in-house. We do the construction in-house. We're really, really busy. So I don't like doing, you might see some guys out there, they'll do $25,000 flips. Like they'll do it and they make 25 grand, which is really good for them if that's their business and they're gonna go do 10 of them. That's cool, that's good for you, right? Uh, or 
Some people do 100 a year and they make 10 grand a piece. That's awesome, that's good for you. My model, what's good for me, is I like doing one that can make me as much as what a person would make all year doing this. Or I'll do two. That's really my focus, is that um, making larger money with less energy. I want the return on time. That's my number one investment uh, key that I look for in, in investing. So that's how I made roughly $285,000 on the historic house.